Hi guys and welcome back to Nick's Home Renovation. I am back at my 1955 build and I'm glad to say there's been a lot of progress since my last video. The kitchen has been plastered, well 90% of it. This has been the priority in the last few weeks because my DIY kitchens is coming in two weeks. We're commencing 12th of August I think. So it's really exciting so we just need to get the utility buttoned up as well and then we can start installing the kitchen. So we're getting to the exciting phase now where all that sort of horrible building work of plasterboarding and insulating and rewire and re-plumber, re-plumbing, sorry, is getting to the latter stages. So the rewire's done, um, the bathroom, the en-suites, plumbing is done. So all of those are completely buttoned up and ready to plaster. And I'm really looking forward to the stage where I can get rid of all the off-cuts of plasterboard and all the bits of insulation I haven't used and start fresh because the carpenter will be doing skirting soon and architraves and the kitchen and we're getting to that really exciting and more importantly nice part so where we can move in still hopefully for october let me take you on a tour show you what's been going on so this room has been plastered apart from in the lantern and the skylights and by the utility here the reason this bit hasn't been plastered yet is because we're having some sort of specialist units in there. We're having a, a tall larder with a double larder in here and then a door through to the utility and it's all gonna be built out. So we had the idea of stealing some space from this utility so we can have deep units. So all of this needs to be studded off first in this way because we this is about 30 centimeters and we're eating into this about 30 centimeters. So we need to do all that before we can plaster in here. Then the next job will be to plaster all in here and this will be our utility. So for those of you that haven't seen my videos before, the old house was basically from this wall to this wall. That was the old outer house. And what we've done is we've done a ground floor extension the whole way across the back. And we also had a lovely seven meter side plot, which we have a double extension here above my head in. So we've created this big lounge at the back couple of rooms at the front up here and two bedrooms and two en suites above us in this side space and then this back space we've created this kitchen diner living room situation we're having a fairly simple l shape kitchen with a big island in the middle we're not having wall units we want to have something a bit different and keep it all as open as possible we will be having some tall units here for the fridge and the oven but we're avoiding having wall units here and might have shelves or lighting or something just to keep all the light coming in. We'll need to have an extractor up here for obvious reasons as the hob is going here. But again, I think we'll just build something at the top here so we're not infringing on the space. The windows went in the other week. I'm really pleased with in the doors. We went for the aluminium look here. This is basically a copy of the Crittle look, which is steel, but all of these are aluminium. And I really like how they all just line up across my lovely and evenly across the whole build and we've kept that sort of cross shape that we've got in the front of the house and upstairs even though they're different windows utility is going to be really cool i know you can't get too excited about utility but we're having four tall units the whole way in here and in this corner bit might be my most exciting bit which is so pathetic but it's going to be a walk-in larder so all of our units will be from diy kitchens i'm going to do some amazing videos but we're having a walk-in larder in the corner there where you open it up and lights come on and you've literally got loads of space here, loads of space here, and it's gonna be amazing. And then we're just having low units here, lots of things like washing machine, dishwasher, tumble dryer, all in this unit, all in these units here with wall units coming across. Here's where I'm keeping all the rubbish at the moment. This is where all the old insulation is and rigid insulation and soft insulation that was in the walls, the 50 mil, and just off cuts a bit. It's really useful having that space. Take you through to the living room. Oh, also, you can see this big box. This is for something I'll show you on another video, but I've got a robot lawnmower. So I'm setting it up in the garden now. I'll show you guys out there in a second, because the garden and the back of the house is looking really lovely now. This is our living room. So it's a lovely big space. And we've created these pocket doors here. So all of this is stud work going into the corner there and just to have these pocket doors. And we're gonna have the pocket doors, even though there'll be an MDF, they'll look like these ones here. And hopefully you won't be able to tell the difference. 
and we went for none of the bars in this one kept this plane to be a bit different and we went for the double patio doors with a window either side there and it's just basically deciding how to divide up this space because we're going to have some sort of tv area but it's such a big space you don't really want sofas on the edge and a big gap in the middle but fortunately hope well i'm hoping emily is in charge of that as it's a bit overwhelming let's show you the garden it is a bit of a tip so the grand plan is to have a patio and you can probably see here we've got to raise it up a lot so there's the grass at the moment and we've got three layers of block to build that up so that's why we've got all this rubble all this mixture of type one type two so that's all going to come under here and build up for the patio eventually and i think we're going to bring the patio as far out as we can maybe as far as those road bushes and have a nice big patio here for a nice seating area and then down here is where i'm setting up my robot lawnmower so it lives in this little house and it goes back and charges itself automatically how cool is that and you can already see it started to make a start but it's just charging again now and it's gonna it's already made a start on a higher level and it'll eventually cut it down to really nice it's doing a good job because that is what it was like and this is what it's like now and then the back of the house i think is looking really nice really attractive even though it's ridiculously far too big but i'm pretty pleased with how it looks and you can see the difference in the windows up there so we've gone for just upvc up there but they're supposed to look like timber and again we've kept the cross and even though they're different from downstairs i think it works really well have our swimming pool which the grand plan is to take more of this down lower it even further because the water table is really low here so we need to bring it down further when the diggers back here doing the patio and when we do the drive we'll put all the soil from the drive in there and hopefully something grows we've got thousands of rose bushes it seems back here all right let's take you back through so what's happening in the next couple of weeks is everything's being rendered so the renderers are coming within the next two weeks so we're just going for an off-white everywhere it's called haze by ewi i think the company are called so that would be a nice thing very expensive thing to do but unfortunately is a necessity so if i take you back to the front door so you can get your bearings here's the front door we've got this lovely hallway nice big open welcoming hallway emily's office in here which i'll take you into in a minute and then you come through left and this is the old end of the house here where you can see this is and we're now in the double story side extension there's that lounge this is going to be lydia's playroom it's been half plastered so the ceilings have been plastered and this one wall and they're going to come back and do these i think from tomorrow and then we've got double doors going into a little TV room, which is basically for Emily and I have an evening. Just have a little corner sofa and a TV in here. And maybe have a cup of coffee time to time with our friends. That's all been fully plastered. In what was the back of the old kitchen is now going to be basically a plant room at the back here. Got our underfloor heating for all the extension that I ran. And it's gonna be a tank with the boiler up in the loft. And then we're gonna have a little cloaked cloak room in this front bit and put a door back there so you don't see any of that ugliness. And we've got a nice size downstairs toilet. Got this temporary one in there for now. And you can see all the plumber. One plumber has done this entire house by himself, which I think is pretty impressive considering there's four, well, a downstairs toilet, a bathroom, two en suites it's a lot let alone radiators everything a lot of work for one guy and emily's office is also ready just the electric just needs to be capped and this can be plastered as well and we've just got to feel where the old fireplace was with some blocks bond all of this out and cap all of this off and this room's ready to go as well i'll take you to the front garden just so you can see the front of the house not much has changed in the last few months apart from the scaffolding some of the scaffolding has been removed so the renders can get to everywhere so you can see the house a bit more and then as i say this will be rendered 
in the next few weeks and the eventual grand plan although it is the last job is to do this drive which is an in and out drive coming around here up there with a new brick wall on the front but that is the last job not just because it's phenomenally expensive but it also makes sense with the soil and taking it back through the garden and we can use that to put in the in the old swimming pool coming up the stairs which you might be able to tell eagle eye people for the first time that these were flipped so they used to come exactly the other way and we flipped them because you can see from this marking in the wall they came over the door which was horrendous so we flipped those to give us a lot more room again really lucky with this house i can't really fault anything so far got a lovely landing lovely big open landing then we have four bedrooms up here so this is the only bedroom that hasn't changed pretty much the only room that hasn't changed in the whole house so this is bedroom four bedroom three which we think will be lydia's room and what we've done here is a jack and jill bedroom bathroom sorry so we can access the bathroom from here which is down you can see down there through this little area here which will be wardrobes here and shelving here and you can also access the bathroom from the landing which is back here coming through here and there's Lydia's room down there the idea was we're hoping you know bath time and everything before bed it just makes sense we think to have a bath her bedroom there I can just go straight to it although that's very wishful thinking as most kids don't want to go to bed again you can see the plumbers i think plumbing is definitely the most difficult trade because there's so much intricate work this is just for a bath filler with a separate hose over there so having a wall mounted bath with sort of a u-shape here back to wall um in like a d-shape and that's all the work he's had to do just for a bath filler and a separate hose which i just think is bananas there's the waste for the bath there gonna have a niche and we have a lighting for that bath the sink is going here you see my cable for lighting and again the plumber's done lots of work for that you've got the waste for the sink and the wall hung taps and then the loo is going dead center of this window and there's the waste for the toilet and the feed cold feed for the toilet too and then the shower trays are all stuck down so shower trays always go down first and for those of you wondering about all the different boards so we obviously had a few too many pink boards so even though that's a fireball and it's supposed to be over steel we had it spare so it can be used in here and again we ran one short of the blue or a few short of the blue so we put that there it doesn't matter because it's all being fully tiled in the shower zone anyway um and everything will be waterproof but usually you're supposed to use the blue everywhere these are the shower valves for the shower and you've got the hose coming out where that's going there and then that's where the head's coming out of there and the idea is you can hopefully turn it on without getting completely drenched first and that's the logic of that in here is probably going to be some pumps and things for the water softener and everything going on for the plumbing and i think he's going to run all of his pipes up this wall up into the loft and the boiler is going to be in the loft just to save us some space because with the tank downstairs the boiler the pumps the underfloor heating there's just so much going on this is the upstairs of the side extension and we created two bedrooms one on the left which is our guest bedroom a fairly narrow space but we can get a double bed in here we'll infringe a little bit into this zone but the reason we've got the double bed there is so we can have some nice wardrobes up here and it works well with the ensuite in here as well so you've got a niche again same logic as in the main bathroom valves over here so you can turn it on not get completely drenched when you turn it on and get the right temperature and over here we're going to have wall hung taps basin under there and the toilet is there I haven't done the waste out yet because we're down the side now so when we actually buy the toilet he'll drill out the wall there with the loose 
And then coming through to the master bedroom, our bedroom. It's really exciting. Our bed's gonna go there, and then we have a dressing room and an ensuite, which is very spoilt. So here's the shower down here. Again, the trays are all glued down now, all tested, all the pipes have been tested, the waste have been tested, and shower valves on the right, hose on the right, main shower on the left, main head on the left. Toilet feed down there, and then the sinks there give us enough space to open the door in there. We're gonna put it more in this zone, but actually we worked out that you wouldn't have a very good swing of the shower, and we've got quite a long room here. So that's just the towel rail, those two down the end, and the sinks go in there, and the loo's go in there. And only one more wall needs to be plastered in our dressing room too. And then this is completely plastered. I say our dressing room, I have a sneaky suspicion my clothes are gonna be somewhere else. Little view out the window. You can see the garden, you can see the lovely lanterns where I bought from EOS roof lights. So there's two lanterns and a skylight down the end from EOS. Probably can't see the skylight from here. And then you can see the lovely garden that my lawnmower started to work on. It's just having a little reboot. But I think my garden is put to shame by the neighbours at the moment. So a lot to work on. Looks like it needs a drink out there as well. So that's it for now. So we're really getting to the nuts and bolts of finishing what I call the sort of construction-y side of things. I'm really hoping within a month we've got no more plastering to do and we're back to just second fixing everything. So we need to then think about painting these plastered walls. Um, but I want to wait until the skirting and architraves and coving and anything like that. So um, once all that's done, we can start painting and we can start putting on sockets and lights and we can really start pushing forward and making decisions about flooring in the kitchen and things like that. But the next big thing definitely is the kitchen. Two weeks from DIY Kitchens, we've got a bespoke colour, um, farrow and ball colour. So I'm really excited to see that and I uh, can't wait to show you guys. So thanks to everyone for watching and subscribing and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.